What's the channels that you sell scrap? Okay. Now this is really up to the individual. I sell it on eBay. That's scrap. I just put it on there and let them decide what. what okay. And I decide the, the least I'll take for it. Right. And so I have found that there are people wanting to buy just quote silver that will pay a little more than scrap to get stuff. But they're, they're buying silver. They're bullish. They're wanting silver. And so they'll buy, and, and especially the weighted stuff, because I don't want to mess with it. And uh, oftentimes, if I buy a group of stuff and it's got a, a piece like this that's weighted, I might sell that weighted piece and clear the up or get it loose. You know what I mean? Because to me, this is not as desirable as these unweighted ones. Because my theory of thinking is that if we ever get into that place and time when this stuff's worth, it would be hard to sit across the table and for me and a brother to figure out what this is worth. Where we could weigh this and we could figure out and we could tell it's worth this and all and But this one has got that steel wall on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So if I if I have, you can just run it on eBay. If you're not set up to do eBay, then it'd be a, a different deal. If you've never done eBay, you might want to sell it to a scrapper. It doesn't matter to me as long as you know approximately what it's worth. You know. well, who are the scrap, the, the okay, so scrap dealers? Or, I mean, just, you just go. Well, you're, you're okay. You're, you're stuck with two, basically two counts. The people that are advertising locally, like the guys that offered the, the thousand dollars for the two, the, the twenty five hundred dollars worth of silver. You're dealing with those boys. You've got the online guys. Then you've got to take into consideration postage and you know da 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 and all those things. So. Uh, and then I told someone, I said, I don't sell much silver. I don't sell much scrap silver. I just don't do it. I'm, I'm hoarding. I'm hanging on. Right. <laughs> you know. But we didn't hear that from you. I'm, and we don't know where you keep your stuff. You're safe. <laughs> yeah. What was that address again? <laughs> well, what's, the, what's that pistol toad lady over <laughs> And by the way, there's a pistol toad lady. <laughs> But uh, anyway, those, those are some thoughts about it. Okay. Uh, but the Gold Masters is a really good uh, place. I don't think they advertise for scrap. Uh, maybe they do for gold. But you can really research it. The thing is, is to stay away from these guys, uh, these local people. Well, any of them, they're not, they're, they'll all, any of them will get you if they can. They, that's just kind of them. Kind of a sad part of life. All right, this, on the Ford Move Away, has anybody got any on the, on the silver uh, pipe stuff, the jewelry? Anybody got any other questions? By the way, y'all didn't pay attention to my nice little, my little tie bar. Did you notice that the little gun comes out of the holster? Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Believe it or not, <clears throat> those were really solid. Huh. Yeah. What is it? It's a tie. You work with people that wear a tie, which I don't. They put this up. They put this on your tie with the tie clip, so that shows. So they're kind of a cross between usable and collectible. And I kind of got into the what they like and what they don't. And, uh, I just thought that one was kind of a cute example to show y'all. Nobody paid anything. All right. We'll talk about the silver coins. <coughs> We've talked about some dimes, quarters, half dollars. All of them were 90% silver up until 1965. In 1965, the silver was removed from the dimes and the quarters. And I've got a couple. They were down on this end. Y'all want to actually hold the silver? Quarter? Yes. Hold the silver quarter and the dime. Silver, the half dollar is in a, a little holder, but kind of pass that around. That's that's what all the money used to be like. We didn't know there was anything else because there wasn't anything else. And uh, it's kind of sad. Okay, in 65, 66, and 67, I, I didn't really look at, I'm kind of going by memory there. They, the halves were 40%. So they're in a little kind of a K 
have to wear all their own. However, for years, you can go down and get a sort of a bunch of rolls of hash and still find it. So then you do the same old formula, only instead of 90%, or at 40%, so they're worth about a little less than half of a dollar. But I felt like I needed to mention that to you so you wouldn't go out and tell somebody that all halves were going to sell bread. So, so they did that and they just made our money worthless as far as in itself. It's, it's no different than a dollar bill. If you don't believe that that's worth a dollar, it's not. Or if somebody doesn't believe it, they can sell it in Hong Kong or whatever during the collapse. In other words. So really it's fiat money as they talk about in these books. It's money because someone believes it's worth a quarter. <laughs> so, what what do we have now is really just that we have faith, which is sagging. <laughs> uh, there's no more silver certificates. There's no more gold backing any of our dollars. Uh, the, the Fed or the Mint and the Protestant, they're just making this stuff. And the only reason that it is accepted as currency and coinage is because people accept it. It has no value. I don't think it would have worked back in Bible times. I don't think you could have bought anything with our dollars. I know you could. But you could have taken those silver dimes and you went back in history and it would still be more safe. So, so we're in new territory. Uh, there's a couple of things that have happened that I thought I should tell you about that I didn't know uh, that in the 30s when the government made it illegal to what they said hoard gold or to own gold and that you were limited I believe to one ounce. Do you know how they did that? Executive order. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that crazy? Exactly. When was that? In the 40s. I think 40, uh, 46 maybe. You'll have to hold my feet to the fire on that. Have I got it up there? No. We were just going to ask you to say it one more time. Say it one more time. The, the government regulation that called in all of the gold made it mandatory to turn in your gold coin, your gold bullion and I believe 1946. That was executive. Was an executive order. I looked it up on Wikipedia to make sure. And then the Congress made it law or something a year later, I believe. So then it remained illegal. I'm in the gold section. I got the silver section up there. But it remained illegal to hold and hoard gold. And guess who said it the other way? In 1978, they turned it around. What's that? I believe it was in 78 that Richard Nixon changed it. And all of those years, the price of gold was fixed by the government. A long time it was fixed at 30 something dollars an ounce. And then I think in when, he, when he unfixed it, it was $78 an ounce. And I remember some of us guys standing in that work saying, you know, I wonder if we should buy some of that gold. Do you think it's going to go up? <laughs> you know, that's how that's how naive we were. Hey, can you back yeah. to one? So the government's always messing with our stuff, aren't they? <laughs> and then we were talking at lunch about the copper and pennies, another whole story which they caught on to this silver thing and they made it illegal to melt copper pennies, which are not copper after, I believe, 1982 or so. They're zinc. Even our pennies are fake. So, so we're not on very solid ground with our money anymore. So, uh... So Nickel still has some intrinsic value? 
I'm sorry? Don't nickels still have some intrinsic value of like 40%? No, the only nickels, and you get another, you got to look at everything. Nothing's absolute. During the war of World War II, they made some war nickels that were part silver. That's the only ones that I know of. I'll never ever use silver. And, and they traded a little bit above, kind of in between silver value, kind of like those 40% hands. There is a value for war nickels, but not many people want them. They're kind of not. But nickels have never had any metallic value that I know of. I'm sorry? Just, just take, take what you've written and start on the next one, okay? I'll, I'll give you a printout of it. So you can burn wooden nickels for fuel. So 90% silver coins are traded in multiples of $1 face, general. Like, like 10 dimes is a dollar, four quarters, or two halves. Now the halves are beginning, are thinking they're having a premium on them now. So we're, we're, we're basically talking mostly in, and if we're going to buy silver coins, and what I want is the dimes, and preferably in them quarters, for the reason we talked about earlier, that we were talking about you wouldn't want to cut this bowl up the same way. If you want to spend a, a silver dime, you wouldn't want to cut a quarter. You know, you, in other words, it's smaller denominations. And that's like if, if I had to choose, I'd like to have 10 $1 deals than the $10 deal. If I had only one or the other, I would have change because I can always give them 10 ones or five, but I can't give them $2 out of that 10. Does that make sense? So four dimes, I mean, 10 dimes, four quarters, or two halves. Okay, and the, this one dollar in face contains point seven one five troy ounces of silver. That's across all denominations. Yeah. So ten dimes has that much, four quarters has that much. Okay. Not taking into effect where. Okay. So we're saying, you know, we're saying, uh, that's why the figures that we've been coming playing with in our little thing. Okay. Then here we go with this high math again. We're going to have to multiply. <laughs> if a dollar face contains 0.715 troy ounces of silver, and we're back at that old $32 spot, I think I did the multiplying for us. Hope I did it right. $22.88. So right now, today, 10 of those dimes would, would be worth $22.88 of pure silver. Okay. And then, in the market, there has to be a premium in order for people to, to trade. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Is that, that if, if I just sold them to you for $22.88, you sold them the next guy for twenty-two eighty-eight. Nobody would be making any money, so there has to be some premium or in there. So the dealers, uh, like when I buy silver coins, then I shop around. That's my base. I'm gonna get as close to that as I can. So what I do is I go to Goldmasters and I see what they're paying for a dollar's worth, and I look on another page. I see what they're asking. And so in between there will be the actual value. And then I go out from there out into the market to the local guys because I don't want to pay for postage and I don't want to blah, 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 and the other things. I want to get it right down, have it in my little bits. And I go out to the local guys with what? The knowledge so that I don't have to depend on them to tell me what it's worth. Just like if I was selling tomatoes or buying tomatoes, if I was buying a car, you might want to look your car up in the blue book or something before you went and sold it. Or you might want to look the one you're going to buy up in the blue book or whatever the going auto value manual is. The same thing we'll do. If you're going to buy a television, if you want a 42 inch LCD high pixel, you might want to know what 
the Hitachi at Sam's is, how much the Sony is at Target, you would want to shop around. That's so that's what I'm encouraging you to do, just shop around. Just like you would for anything else. And I oftentimes everybody's really a fail. They'll go shop for tires. Guys will shop forever for a set of tires. They'll this tire shop, tire shop, tire. But they won't go super shopping. There there's some kind of a stigma about it that they're that they think they're gonna get taken or something or that, you know. And so I, I don't understand it, but the, but if you guys you're gonna be armed with this with this if you want to use it. This is pretty good information. And so when, when they're talking about silver coins, buying and selling, you're gonna have the information in hand to know what they're talking about. And then you can go to Gold Masters on any given day and find out what the market value is. And so whenever I buy silver coins, I do exactly the process we're talking about. So then I go and I buy them as close as I can to 2288. Now I got, I'm not going to buy them for that long because somebody's got, there's got to be a little premium in there. So I'm willing to pay 50 cents above or whatever, you know, to get a fair price. But if I, if, if they're, if they're actually worth 2288 and Joe Blow down the street wants 24 and this guy over here wants 2350 and they're, they're apples and apples, I'm buying them over here. So that's, that's just how it goes down. Okay, the, the last genuine silver dollar was in 1935. And silver dollars have a little more silver in them than they for quarter. So silver dollars kind of have their own little world that they trade you. They're, they're just neat. You know, I couldn't find one outside of some of my secret places to bring today. Uh, but I was going to tell you a quick story. A, few, a couple of years ago, we had a Christmas party for our ministry team. What do you call these gift things? The white elephant? Elephant gift? So I thought, well, I'll just stir that place up. So for my $20 gift, you know what I took? A genuine silver dollar, and I think it was two silver coins. At that time, they were worth about $20. And I thought, well, when they see that, they'll be fighting over my gift. <laughs> and I will stir them up and I'll get them all conscious of the silver. <laughs> and I remember you were there that night. Nobody wanted them. You were over them? Nobody wanted my gift. Now it's worth about, what, 40? <laughs> you know who wound up with it? Mikey McGinty. Really? Mikey McGinty. He's the only one. And you know why? He and I have, have talked and and they looked around all this, all this kind of stuff since he was about this high. And boy, he just <laughs> took that white elephant and it, it never got out of his hands. He knew, but the rest of the people didn't. They couldn't care for that. They just they weren't. They, they liked what they had the, I don't know, the tortilla bag, or whatever it was. That, that was going around, you know. But I went home and I was like, I'm so disappointed. Nobody cared a bit about my, my gift. But, but that's kind of where we are, is people and people don't know. They, don't, they just don't. Yeah. It's like nobody wanted ammunition until they can't get it. Nobody wanted any gun. Nobody wanted any Ruger 10 so you can't buy them without. Now everybody's Ruger 10. So it's human nature. My mother and dad used to say, you never miss the pepper until the pepper is gone. I never knew what that meant, but that's what they meant. You wouldn't miss it until it's gone. Yeah. And having lived through the Depression, that meant something to them. Because they've had a lot of times when everything was gone, you know. 